What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we have what to look for after you crash. So in this video, basically, I just want to go over after you crash a model, regardless of what make or model that it is, what you should be expecting, you inspecting, checking, looking for, get a parts list. Because sometimes when you crash a model, you pick it up and you think, okay, it's not that bad. Like for example, Broke the tail boom off, you look at it real quick, you think it's good to go, you order a couple parts and you find more hidden damage. So we're going to go through an in-depth video on how to check your feathering shaft, how to check your main shaft, what to look for your servo gears, your plastic horns, your frame side damage, you know, go through your tail casing. So we're going to go over all that. So if you guys haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and remember, Patreon and PayPal are in the description below if you would like to help support me. Let's get started. So one of the first things that I always look for after a crash is I check my shafts. Now, when you first just look at your main shaft and your feathering shaft, there's no way to really tell if they're bent by just looking at it unless it is a significant bend after a hard crash. Then you would, it's pretty obvious because your blade grip will be down or up. So here's a little tip for you. If you take one of your blade bolts out, we have one here, we removed one here. Our feathering shaft is a two and a half millimeter driver. So our bolt is two and a half millimeter driver. You're gonna insert your driver into one end and you're gonna watch the other blade grip. You're gonna slowly turn it and you're gonna watch to see if this grip here moves up or down. So now we're gonna turn it faster, try to hold the head as still as we can and we're gonna watch that grip. You notice it's not moving. If it was bent, when you turned your, this bolt here, this side of the shaft, this blade grip would go up or down, or this one would move up or down. Now, if you didn't know if that was that one looks okay, sometimes you can get a slight, slight bend, and one side won't move, one side will. So it's always a good thing just to go ahead and check the other one while you're at it. Go ahead and get that bolt into there. Again, watching this grip now and we're rotating, it's not moving. So we know our feathering shaft is perfectly straight. So now we need to check our main shaft. There's a couple different ways you can check this. If you think it's bent, go ahead, pull the shaft out and put it in a drill. If you spin the head, so we're gonna go ahead and spin the head and we're gonna look at that and we don't see a bend. Now it is very hard if it's a minor bend. So the best thing to do would be pull it out stick it in a drill motor and it would look like this. So now I have a main shaft in a drill motor. Now this main shaft is out of a 700 size helicopter, but it is going to be the same exact principle. So when you put your shaft in your drill, chuck it up and then slowly spin the shaft. We already see a wobble, okay? But if you wanted to be cautious, take yourself a Sharpie. If it's a small bend, sometimes you can't see them. And what I'm gonna do is just hold it and we can see how it's marking the shaft that's where our bend is so now we have a visible mark on where the bend is on the shaft and we can do the same thing we can come up into here and we can see where it's touching do the same thing here and we can see where it's touching so this shaft is bent in multiple places which is very common to happen but this is a great way to check if your main shaft is bent you can do the same with your feathering shaft, but usually doing it the way we just did with putting a driver in one end works very well. So we know this shaft is bent and we need to replace it. So now we know our feathering shaft is okay and our main shaft is okay. If they were bent, you would go ahead and replace them. The next thing we're gonna do is pop our links off on the blade grips. I like these links pliers here. These are really nice slop free ball bearing, the best ball link pliers I have tried. So you're gonna go ahead and pop your ball links off on both sides of the helicopter here. And we're gonna check our bearings because sometimes after a crash, you can get gritty bearings. The bearings can get damaged. It's not very common. I have really only a handful of times ever had to replace bearings, but it's good to check them. So we know our bearing, our blade grips feel good, smooth, free. So now we know that's okay. So we're gonna move our way down. So now this is when we start getting into visually checking. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check our Washout arms here, our radius arms. That one's not bent, it looks perfectly straight. And we're gonna go ahead and check this other one here. It looks perfectly straight. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull on the head here, see if we have any play, which we don't. A Little bit of wiggle in the head block, which is normal on these. And then we're gonna continue going down. We're gonna look at the swash plate here and we're gonna check and see if the swash plate has any arms bent. Sometimes after a crash, 
these points on the swash plate can bend and it can happen. So it's good just to go ahead and visually check it. So now we're gonna move on to our servo. So we're gonna take each servo here and we're going to manually move it up and down carefully. Okay, some people don't like to do this and you're not gonna hurt the servo. So go up and down, do a quick little jerk. And what that does is see if the plastic on the inside of the horn strips out. Sometimes the horn won't break, but the inside splines will strip. So this servo is good. We're gonna go ahead and go to this servo. It's good. I'm moving it through the range to feel for any grit, broken, bent teeth. And we're gonna go ahead and flip the helicopter over and check our last servo. So now that servo is good. So now we have verified that everything in the head is okay. There's nothing bent that we needs to be replaced. We're gonna move down. We know our servos are good. We're gonna keep moving down the helicopter. So our main mother plate frame here, your main plate on these helicopters, every helicopter is gonna have different things, but this again goes to all helicopters. This is just what you look for. So we look, we don't see no aluminum bends because in a crash, aluminum doesn't usually break, it bends. So it's always good to go ahead, look at any aluminum bearing blocks, any mounts or anything checked it and we're going to go ahead and we're going to check our motor belt on this specific helicopter we're going to spin it and we're going to look for any cracking tearing fraying anything like that our belt looks good and we're going to go ahead and check our tail and see how this pulley looks we don't see any messed up teeth anything so all that's looking good so now we're going to move on to our mainframe and we're going to check this mainframe over other than this little bit of double-sided tape I need to remove, everything else on the mainframe looks good. And we're going to flip the helicopter over, and we're going to start start looking, go through our mainframe. I don't see nothing broken yet, nothing. Oh, I do found something. So when the battery ejected in the crash, it cracked the frame. So it cracked our little tab here, and it cracked the frame right here. So our mainframe will need to be replaced, our frame side. Now, technically speaking, you could pull this off hold this back flat, a little bit of thin CA and glue that because it's not a critical point, but I have a new mainframe. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. We're just going to go visually inspect the rest of the helicopter now, and we're going to go and we know we need a new tail boom. So now we're going to move on to the tail casing. Now, of course, this is a belted helicopter, but it's the same as if it's a torque tube. So the first thing I'm going to expect inspect is my tail belt. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the entire belt and I'm gonna check it, make sure there is no cracking in it, no fraying, anything like that. It's not broken, because we don't wanna have a crash from a belt breaking. If it's a torque tube model, you're gonna go ahead and inspect your torque tube gears and make sure there is no teeth missing, anything is broken on the gears. Nine times out of 10, they will be. So now we're gonna go ahead and we know that we need a tail fin, because it is broken. So we know we need a tail fin, of course a tail boom, but our belt is good. So now we're gonna have to move on we're gonna check and we now know we need a tail push rod because that is broken. So we're gonna just do our same thing like we did on the head. We're gonna start, we're gonna look at these tail teeth here, make sure that they are okay. We're gonna feel and spin our tail slowly and feel for any gritty bearings, any hard spots. Our tail is very smooth, so our bearings are good. Now we're gonna check our arm here, Our little mixer arm, bell crank looking arm, and we are going to see if anything is broken here. It feels good and smooth. And then we're gonna keep, oh, look, broken there. So we broke the little pitch slider here. So that is broken, so we'll need to get one of those. And again, we're just visually inspecting. So now we're gonna move on to the tail shaft. So now we're gonna spin this tail shaft and look to see if it's bent. Again, you can do the same thing with pulling it out, putting it in a drill motor and spinning it, but if it's bent, you will see it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spin it. And I don't see no bend here, so the tail shaft did survive. And then you're gonna do the same on your tail feathering shaft where you're gonna take a blade off, put your driver in the end of it, spin it, and watch the other grip to see if it's bent. I know these are not. Now, we're gonna inspect our tail blades. Again, we took a crash tail first on this helicopter and we're gonna inspect these blades good because we don't want nothing coming apart. We're gonna look for cracks, chips, that's a little bit of dirt, so that is okay. We're gonna check our other blade. We do have a little mark right here, a little nick taken out of the blade. We have it on both sides, that is okay. It's not gonna hurt the blade. It's not gonna hurt the helicopter. We're gonna go ahead and check the rest of the blade and our blades look great. So now we know that our tail casing is good. We just need a couple little parts. Also something too, if your helicopter has a aluminum 
part here, a little cross member, check that, make sure it's not bent. And if you have an aluminum side, these will bend too. So we're gonna look down the middle of it. It is perfectly straight. And we're gonna look at this little cross member here and it is perfectly straight. And again, if you're not sure if your tail shaft is bent, put it in a drill motor. Now this is one out of another helicopter, but we're gonna check it because I know this is bent. We're gonna spin it and you can see the wobble. See it right here, it's bent bad. It's bent in three different spots. So this tail shaft is bent. So the same principle, you can check your shafts by just putting them in a drill motor, really easy. Another thing you're gonna want to inspect and look at are your plastic arms, all your clevises, all your rods. You're gonna go through and inspect every one of them for cracks, for white. They, they'll turn white when they don't break all the way, but they start to have a lot of pressure on them. So we're gonna inspect every single push rod every single ball link and we're gonna go through our arms here. Again, we're gonna check all of them. Just go through them with a fine tooth comb. Look at them, same with your servo push rods. Go through, check the back sides, make sure there's no hairline cracks or fractures because you can crash a helicopter. If one of these have a crack in them, you don't notice it, you go fly. So you really wanna go through your model with a fine tooth comb. You wanna go from front to back and inspect everything after any and every crash because things like, for example, a carbon fiber anti-rotation bracket, it could break, it, especially since it's carbon fiber, it has a crack in it, go to, down the road, you can crash your helicopter. So it's very important after any helicopter hits the ground that we go through the entire model. Another thing to look through and go at is your wiring. Go ahead and inspect any wire that might go through a carbon fiber frame, anything touching like this. Now, if your frame is broken, that's especially very important to look at. Wherever the break is, make sure there's no wires back there because if you have a wire where the break is, you can break the wire. Go through, look at your fly barless unit. Make sure that it is not loose. Give it a wiggle, shake it. You don't want that to come off. So if it has gotten loose from a crash, that can fall off in flight. Also too, look at your servo plugs and make sure that they are all still in. Give them a little push. Now we always put fabric paint on them. Make sure they don't go anywhere, but it's something very important to look at. And the same if you're running satellites, make sure that that wire, see it was a little bit out, is fully pushed in. Make sure that your satellite wire is not broken. Anything down here, your rudder servo is something we did not look at. So we didn't look at the rudder servo and it took a hard hit. So we're going to do the same thing. Back and forth, very smooth. This wire came out. It was tucked up here, so we'll have to fix that but just go over the entire model. Other thing is to visually inspect your blades. Now, these aren't the blades that were on this helicopter. These were off another 380. The ones that were on this 380 are destroyed as well as the canopy. It's all already in the trash, but go through your blades. Now this blade looks good. And there's a reason why these blades are not going back on this helicopter or another helicopter is because we have a massive chunk missing out of the root of the blade right out here. It could probably be filled in with some CA and sanded out, but these are just gonna become a spare set of emergency blades if needed. But go through your entire blade, go through it with a light so you can see through the carbon and you can see any cracks or hairlines, give them a pull and a twist, tug on them, flex them, make sure there is no cracks because they might look okay, but if you go to put a little pressure on them, they, if they're cracked, you'll hear it crack. So let's make sure that the blades are okay because any cracks or damages to carbon fiber blades is a big no-no and you are asking for trouble. Another very important thing to do after a crash is inspect your battery. Now this battery got ejected out of the helicopter. It was about 15, 20 feet away, but the battery itself is okay. What you're looking for is any puffing, swelling, damage to the battery. It's okay if the heat shrink gets messed up, but any punctures or crush to the actual cells, the lipo cells, that's not okay. There's, these batteries are extremely dangerous. They can burn your house down. If there's any damage to a battery, just throw it away. If you think that the battery is no good, throw it away. There's no reason to risk your house, your collection, your anything over a battery. They are not that expensive and it's better to be safe than sorry. So you're gonna inspect your battery. This battery is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the battery, but the tray did get broken. So we have to replace the battery tray. No big deal. Our connector is okay. We don't see no damage to the connector. Our wires look good. We don't see any cuts, shaves, cracks in our wires. So just go through and inspect the battery as Here well. The perfect example of a battery that's been in a crash that has a little bit of damage to it, but the actual cells of the battery are, are okay. So the heat shrink is 
broken here. If you look at the actual battery here, it has a slight bow out to it. But the battery, both because these are two 6S's, one got shifted slightly, but the battery itself is okay. It's not puffy. It's strong. There's no actual damage to the cell. So it's very important to look at. It's okay if the battery's a little misformed, if it's got a little twist in the battery, that's okay. As long as the battery itself is not punctured. Also too, after a crash, always plug into your battery checker and make sure that all your cells are okay. Not ones at a high crazy voltage or drop real low and then do an internal resistance of the battery and make sure that all the cells are within normal of their internal resistance of whatever that particular battery is. It is also very important to go through and check every single screw on the helicopter after a crash. Stuff can get jolted. If something is bent, you'll see a screw twisted. So always just go through, check everything. It's also a good point to do just regular maintenance, put some more micro lube or grease on your shafts. Just go through the helicopter. It's the perfect excuse. Tear it down, clean it up, go through it. Check your motor that there's no weird bearing noise or grittiness in it. Make sure that if there's any dirt on the helicopter, very important to clean all that off. Go through it. Check the one-way still feels okay. A lot of times one-way bearings will get damaged in a crash. So our one-way is still good. It turns the motor, spins freely. So just go through your entire model, check every screw, check every linkage, check everything on the helicopter to ensure when you put it back together that the model will be 100% perfect. So there you guys go, a video on what to look for, what to do after you crash a helicopter. And again, this applies for all makes, all brands, all sizes from micro up to 800s. It's all the same, just go through your helicopter. So I hope this video has answered some of your guys' questions. If you found it helpful, Give that video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.